This is about as far as I can go uh, this afternoon, even with the Forerunner. It's the middle of June, and uh, the road is still snow covered from here to the trailhead. I am at a place today called High Rock Lookout, and I am a few miles to the, uh, what would it be, southwest of Mount Rainier National Park. And this is a prominent uh, peak, part of the Sawtooth Ridge that uh, overlooks the Nisqually Valley, has an epic view of Mount Rainier, the Goat Rocks Wilderness, Mount Adams to the, uh, to the southeast. So um, I've been here a few times. This is my first time uh, vlogging, so I'm gonna bring you along with me uh, this afternoon. Um, the weather, as you may be able to see, is, uh, is outstanding. It's about uh, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. There is uh, lots of sun in the sky, but also some clouds. And I checked my uh, weather app. So I use a weather app called Clear Outside. And I looked at that this morning and it looked uh, pretty darn interesting to me. Because if you, uh, if you notice on the, uh, on the screenshot here, there are no low clouds, no mid clouds, and lots of high clouds. So uh, what that tells me is high cirrus clouds, that don't snuff out the uh, sunlight, uh, the sunset, but maybe should catch some beautiful uh, sunset color. So fingers crossed on both hands um, for some sunset color tonight and some clouds in the sky. There are, there are clouds in the sky, so that's a good sign. So um, I gotta uh, get my stuff together, pack up my stuff, uh, change into my uh, La Sportiva Nepal Evo boots. Um, I found those to be the best when you're trudging through the snow. I don't know what conditions we'll have up at the peak. So if I have to do any plunge stepping, those are the best boots to have. So I got to uh, get myself together and uh, we'll be on our way to High Rock Lookout. Okay, so we're now up to the ridge. This is just an exposure here. Um, the uh, Before we get up to the lookout tower. The lookout tower is uh, top of the ridge here. Probably another, uh, I don't know, a few hundred feet of elevation gain. This is just an exposure looking off to the, uh, to the east. You can see Mount Rainier here. And uh, you can see Mount Adams off in the distance there. Um, but if you're ever in this area, you can kind of play a trick question and uh, ask your friends how many volcanoes you see. Of course, they're going to say, well, I see Mount Rainier, that's one. I see Mount Adams, that's two. Um, don't see any more. You can't see Mount Hood. You can't see Mount St. Helens from here. But actually, there's uh, one more, and it's right there. That is the uh, Goat Rocks Wilderness Area, and it's actually what's left of the Goat Rocks Volcano. So, a little geology lesson. I am not a geologist by any means, but uh, I do like geology. The Cascade Range is about 40 million years old. And uh, a volcano lives about 2 million years from the time it forms until the time it dies and erodes away. So, Mount Rainier is dated about 600 or 700 thousand years old. So, it's kind of, a, uh, it's kind of in its 20s as far as its lifespan about a quarter of the way through. Uh, Mount Adams is a little older, um, but the Goat Rocks volcano was active between 2.7 million years ago and about 600,000 years ago. And so what used to stand there was a, uh, a cone that looked just like Mount Rainier or just like Mount Adams, but uh, the Goat Rocks is about 7,000 feet. So the top half of the mountain is gone and eroded away um, over hundreds of thousands of years. But some interesting geology on this uh, photo trip today. Uh, there's really no, really no compositions from here for a couple reasons. One is uh, I'm up here for sunset and this is looking off to the east. So um, all of this is going to be in shadow and uh, there's no real, uh, no real composition or view of, of Mount Rainier from here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, again I have lots of time. So I'm going to go uh, further up, go up to the lookout tower, go to the ridge behind the lookout tower, scout around, um, have some fun, see what there is to see, 
and scope out some compositions. But uh, just a little break here, and uh, I'm going to head on up. Well, some of you uh, keen observers may have noticed on the way up some of the B-roll shots that I have an ice axe with me today. And uh, the reason I brought one is it's always better to have one and not need it than to need one and not have it. So uh, I was a little worried about this slope here uh, because depending on how much snow melt there is, uh, it can be fairly steep and long and uh, it's not so much the uh, steepness as it is the run out. If you'd happen to uh, slip, take a fall, especially on the way down without an ax, it's really difficult to stop yourself. Although I have, I have done the self arrest with a trekking pole, but I do not recommend that. So actually the uh, winter route to the lookout tower, the trail crosses at the bottom here, and then you just ascend this, this gully here uh, directly up the snow slope. And so, actually I brought the ax because I thought I may need to uh, ascend and descend the snow gully. And uh, it sounds like I've got some dog company up at the uh, lookout tower, but I'm gonna work my way up there. It's a beautiful afternoon and uh, see what there is to see. It's a pretty amazing view here. Kind of a 360 degree view all the way around. Great view of Mount Rainier. Mount Adams, Goat Rocks. On the other side of the uh, lookout tower, which is right here, nice view of Mount St. Helens. So, um, but, you gotta be careful where you step here. Um, been scouting around, I don't really see, I don't see a composition from this location, which is right here to look out. Um, I think a, uh, a better opportunity for me is to head back down to the uh, to the ridge over here and use the uh, lookout tower as kind of the subject of my composition because the sunset light is going to be coming in from the west and uh, this side of the ridge so just over the ridge uh, will be catching that sunset light and the tower as well so um, I'm gonna mosey around and head over here to the uh, to the top of this ridge which gives me a better view and I think when I get over there it's 625 I think I'll have my dinner so yeah yeah I think this is much better down here than uh, up on top so get this ridge line is interest rock prominence that's uh, gonna catch some sunset color hopefully of Mount Rainier here the tower itself so uh, I think the opportunities for a composition are much better down here along the ridge. You just have to uh, just have to watch where you step. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to find myself uh, a spot to take a break. I'm going to uh, get out my stove, make myself some dinner, and then. Hunt for a composition. Well, seven o'clock, I got two hours till sunset. I'm enjoying my freeze-dried lasagna, which is uh, actually pretty tasty. Mountain House freeze-dried lasagna. And uh, of course, got the hot cup of coffee here. So again, 
it's uh it's so great to be out in uh in the backcountry in nature and not be rushed so uh i said down below i hadn't vlogged from here but actually uh this is my third time coming here the first time i came um which was last year uh it was total whiteout up here so no photographs so therefore there was uh no no vlog for that trip and then i came out here about a month ago um and there was a uh considerable amount of snow on on the uh, approach as well as the road and I actually had to park about a mile further down than what I did today so uh, I ended up getting up here late and uh, the whole thing was uh, rushed and it really didn't make for a good story so no vlog the second time either so third time's the charm um, I'll finish my lasagna uh, probably finish half of my coffee and then it's time to get to work so I haven't taken any pictures yet but uh, time is a wasting, so um, I need to get busy. Well, we're getting that really good indirect side light. Um, as expected, it's illuminating the side of this uh, rock face. It's illuminating the, uh, the tower itself, and there's some uh, um, indirect light on the mountain with uh, some great contrast because of the low level of the sun. Um, this is about as good as it's gonna get um, for depth of field. Um, I've got some really good light shining on this uh, foreground interest, these rocks. Um, shooting this at F13. Um, the shutter speed is what it is, 1 60th of a second. I'm, I'm at about 17 millimeters. And of course at ISO 100. So um, some good clouds in the sky. Uh, good interest in this composition. Pretty happy with it. And uh, I'm gonna finish up here and move on to my second one. Um, that will allow me to wrap up prior to sunset. And I'd like to get down to the, um, to the summer parking lot, basically back down to the road uh, before it gets too dark. So uh, got this one in the bag, I'm gonna pack it up and work on my second one. So this composition is looking directly to the west. I'm looking right into the sun, down this ridge that's highlighted by the, by the late evening uh, sunset light. It's still lit and has some great highlights. But the problem is, as I'm shooting directly into the sun, I'll have to shoot this as a composition. And I'll have to expose for the uh, foreground. And then I'll have to, uh, I'm getting quite a bit of lens flare. So I'll have to block the sun with my hand, uh, shoot it as a composition, and blend it together in Lightroom when I get home. So first thing, um, expose, expose for the foreground, watching my histogram, F18 for that sun star, focusing on the ridge, and when I shoot this, two second timer, block the sun. Okay, next, watch my histogram, expose for the sky, to bring out the color in the sky, not so much concern with the lens flare here. Exposing for the sky. There we go. I think I can get away with the two-shot composition uh, because the uh, I'm able to isolate the sun with my my hand. So it's really it's really the uh, fore and mid ground exposure, and then uh, the second exposure for the sky and the sun. All right, made my way down off the ridge. Um, yeah, so got everything packed up on my way out at uh, 10 minutes before sunset. So um, still quite a bit of light in the sky, but I wanna get down to at least to the main road before it gets too dark. So that's gonna end it from High Rock Lookout. I would uh, 
sincerely like to thank you all for coming along with me today. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this video. If, uh, if you did enjoy the video, always appreciate a thumbs up. And uh, if you like this kind of content, maybe check out some of my other, my other videos. And um, if you want to get updates as I uh, continue to explore and develop as a landscape photographer, well, then consider hitting that subscribe button. So it's been a pretty successful day other than an injured A6600. I'll have to, have to see how that screen looks. The, uh, the screen mount for the flippy screen in the back is bent from the tumble that the uh, camera took, but pretty happy that it's still working. So um, anyway, that's gonna do it from High Rock. Thanks again for coming along. I definitely appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.